Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the second webinar on API, the Open Alex API. Uh, we're really excited about this today. The first one I did was a very curse, uh, cursory introduction to what an API is and what the Open Alex API is. And today, um, my colleague Jason Portnoy, who's the senior, senior data engineer for Open Alex, is going to do sort of the opposite of what I did. Instead of having a presentation, he's not going to have any slides, and he's just going to go in and start um, live coding and walking through how to do some specific use cases in the, the Open Alex API. This session is recorded, so it'll be available uh, online afterwards on our YouTube channel and also on our webinar website. If you do have questions that are coming up, feel free to put them in the Q&A, and I'll respond to the ones that I can. And then after the, the presentation is finished, we'll stop the recording and then go to a live Q&A where we can answer more of those questions live. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Jason. Thank you, Kyle. Hi, everyone. Uh, again, I'm Jason Portanoy, Senior Data Engineer uh, at Open Alex. And um, this is, again, part two of the intro webinar series. I'm going to start sharing my screen now. Um, and we will be coding in Python today. Uh, if uh, there are other other ways of accessing the API, um, R, uh, the R language is, is a, another popular alternative. I won't be touching on that today, but we will probably be having something on that soon um, if you're an R coder. But uh, even if you're not too familiar with, with Python, um, this is a, a very uh, simple introduction um, that uh, OpenAlex's API really lends itself to because it's uh, very easy to use and and, and super simple. Um, again, Kyle will be looking at the Q and A during during the chat. He'll interrupt me if, if he needs to, but um, otherwise we're we're gonna stop the recording at the end and have a, a more uh, active dialogue uh, Q and A. Um, just to get us started before before I start actually uh, coding and and uh, using the API. Um, this is uh, what's called the Jupyter Notebook. If if, uh, if anyone's not familiar with that, it's a way of of um, of presenting a notebook with both code and uh, and presentation style um, uh, content. Um, and this will be made available afterwards, along with the video. Uh, you can go through through it both. This is a more um, organized version of what I'll be doing live. Uh, but just to get us started, um, as Kyle met, uh, uh, went through in, in the last, uh, in part one of this series, uh, he went through what, what an API is. So it's an application programming interface, and it's really a way for, uh, for your software, your code, to get, uh, to get data. Um, if, if, if it's you that's uh, a person who wants to get get access to the data, then the UI is more appropriate, um, the user interface. But we're going to be using the API to to write um, programmatic code to get data. Uh, and as Kyle Kyle went over this in the, in the last one, and so um, feel free to to uh, to review that. But um, just very quickly, the free version of the Open Alex API is, is very generous. It does not require authentication, super easy to use. It allows 100,000 calls per day, which we can lift um, in, in some cases uh, for research projects. We also offer a premium version with, um, with higher rate limits. Uh, and um, so we're just gonna, gonna start diving in and um, with, a, with a live coding session. And to do that, I'm going to just go on the Jupyter Project website. And they have a super simple but super experimental way of just um, getting started. Uh, so this is a little um, a little tentative. I, I'm, I'm hoping uh, things go well, but uh, the the good thing about the Open Alice API is is it's super simple and we can just start coding um, and and see how it goes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna create a folder in my environment and uh, I'll create another one to store our data as we go. Um, but to get started, we just open up a new notebook 
and the way that that these notebooks work is you you can enter your python code and it'll run and you can run it one cell at a time this is called a cell so if we start just by initializing some variables x equals 16 y equals 22 and i press shift enter and i run that cell now those those values are stored and i can make use of them in the next cell so print x times y and now if i go ahead and change y to uh 230 and again print x times y it will have updated updated the variables and we get a new answer um, we can also do things like define a function and this one will just be a very simple one that returns hello and um now we can so running that code didn't actually do anything it just stored the function now we can make use of that function by calling it and then we can print what what that returns um so uh that um that's just a, a basic introduction to oh i didn't mean to do that uh to jupyter notebooks we're going to get started with the the python or the open Alex api now um with a new notebook and there are some good libraries uh to help uh, access the the open Alex api um but Honestly, I, I use the API every day and I don't use any any external libraries. I just make direct calls to the API, get the data back. Um, super simple, super straightforward. That's that's how I tend to work with it. And that's how we're going to be working with it today. We're just going to uh, import two small libraries, very standard ones, um, the request libraries to help actually make the the uh, the requests to the API. And we're also going to import um, CSV to help us output the data into CSV files. Um, there, there's tons more you can do, uh, but we're just going to start super simple like this. And um, another thing I'm going to do at the beginning uh, is initialize or uh, specify my email address. Um, while while uh, the Open Alex API does not require any authentication. It is um, what's known as the polite pool. The polite thing to do is to uh, specify your email address, um, and that will get you some benefits as well. Um, but it also it, it helps us out uh, to to um, know who's making uh, uh, calls. So we'd like it when people do this, and and I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, and now, to start off, we'll make a pretty simple request. Um, Something Kyle, I think, went over uh, in in part one, um, but he went on to the the user interface. Um, and if you just start doing a search, you can. Um, I'm going to search for Kyle's works, and as he uh, as he showed, you can. Uh, activate the the API query function in in the user interface to actually get the um, the API call that's behind the data that's showing up on on the user interface. And if I go ahead and copy this, just paste it into the into the browser, as he showed last time, you can get the results right in your browser. Uh, we're going to be doing the exact same thing just in Python, and Python's going to store the results so we can work with it that way. So um, to do that, it's as simple as specifying the URL. Uh, storing the response. So telling requests to, to get that URL. And then a 200 status code from that means that it was a success. So if response that status code equals 200, 
and we'll print success. And we see it did print success. We also got this warning, and that's going to be um, pretty nasty if we if we get that every time. I I think this this might this probably won't be something you run into um, as a user. I think it's something to do with uh, the the website we're using, the Jupiter uh, Experimental uh, Jupiter Lab uh, website. So I'm just going to go ahead and follow these instructions to to disable those warnings just so we don't get a huge uh, number of, of warnings. So um, but we now have this response variable that uh, that that has our results and to actually get the results of the the papers we wanted, we run this code and when I can print out um, the number of results here that we got from this call. Nope. Got an error there, just need to fix that. Okay. So we got we got 24 results. Those are Kyle's 24 authored papers that that appear in the Open Alex database. Um, I'm going to show you a slightly different way that's a little bit more flexible of making the same type of call. So we'll use a base URL instead, just like we used up here, um, except just just the first part and everything past this question mark are known as parameters. Uh, so we'll be able to specify those um, separately, and it, it, that'll be a little bit more flexible. So to sh just to show you how that works, the base URL that we'll use is open api.openalex.org slash works, and then we'll specify the parameters separately. And this time, we'll actually include the uh, the mailing or the my email that I specified before, uh, which, as I said, is the, the polite thing to do. Uh, and this, is, this makes it easier to do that as well. Um, and we'll specify a filter, which looks just like uh, the filter equals up here. And again, we call response equals, uh, I'll just copy and paste this, make it quicker, because it's the exact same code. And again, we, we got success. This is the exact same response we got before. Uh, we don't have a warning anymore because I disabled them up here. Um, and uh, now just to, to demonstrate what, what you can do with this, uh, very quickly we can, we can um, output a, a CSV file of this. And uh, to do this, I mean, the way I did it, uh, I just Google Python CSV to learn learn more about how exactly to, to write the code. Um, if you go all the way down to examples, they have a, a very a very simple writing example. I'm actually just going to copy and paste it and modify it as I as I need to. So we'll change the name to. Kyle K. Demus works at CSV. And we're going to, instead of writing this, we're going to, we'll start with a header row for the, the column headers. Um, we'll do ID, DOI, publication year, and title. And we'll write the header row. And then we'll just loop through each of the works that we got. Um, oh, I don't think I ever actually, well, that's okay. They're, they're stored up here. So, um, so for, for item in results,
we'll get the ID. We'll get the DOI. We'll get the publication year. And we'll get the title. And then we'll write it all to the CSV. E, this DOI, this publication year. I did a tab complete there. If you press tab while you're writing something, um, sometimes it can fail, help you by, out by filling it out for you uh, in this title. And so each time it goes through this for loop, it's going to write one row uh, here. Uh, so I got a an error here um, because I said, uh, to look in the year uh, data field when it's actually called publication year. So I'll fix that. And um, no output just means that it, it ran without any errors. So if I go into the data folder that I created before, there's a brand new um, CSV file. We can glance at it really quick with just the fields that I specified and um, all of the data for Kyle's works. So that all went very well. Um, where it was? I'm going to rename this so I don't get lost like I just did. Uh, this will be API intro notebook. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and do something a little more complicated. Uh, we're going to look at um, the output of a university's works. So let's go back to Open Alex UI, the website. Um, we're gonna use the University of Tasmania as an example, um, because we, be, we have been working with them and uh, we'll use them as, as our test case. Um, you can see that they have 55,000 works. Um, since this is, this is a demo and Working with that number of works is going to take a little while, which is fine, uh, but not fine for this demo since we don't have hours to to wait for uh, for the requests to to go through and to gather all the data. Um, sometimes it it can take hours. Fifty five thousand is not not too many. That'll take a few minutes. We still don't want to wait for that. But what we're going to do is is for each of these works. We also want to, uh, for, for this example that I'm going to go through, we're going to get the references from those works as well. And that's going to um, to be a, a lot of work. So we're going to want to limit it just for the, the demo. But just know that you don't need to, to have any limits. Um, if you have the time, uh, you can collect it. Um, you know, hundreds of thousands of works is, is something I collect all the time, and that can take uh, just a matter of hours, um, which, you know, is not instantaneous, but it's totally reasonable for a lot of analysis use cases. Uh, but for this, again, I'm going to, um, I'm going to limit by only the last couple of years. And that brings it down to 4,000 results, which isn't too bad. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead with that. Uh, again, we can get the API query. This time, I'm just going to copy the filter. And actually, I'll copy the whole thing and show again in the browser. We can we can get the results, but um, if you notice, it says per page 25, and there are actually only 25 results that get returned. Um, so we're going to have to do something called uh, paging, specifically cursor paging where we make multiple requests to the API, it gives us the data piecemeal um, over a series of pages. And uh, that's how we'll, we'll collect it. The API uh, won't give you everything all at once, but it can, it can page through all the results so you can get whatever you need. So I'm gonna copy the filter.
actually first I'm going to basically recreate what I did up here. So just copy and paste that and I'll change the filter to that filter that I wanted. Sorry about that. No, what, what, what happened there? This is what I want. And this is just URL and code. I'm gonna change this to make it more readable, but that's the, the exact same thing. Uh, just to make it clear, this is the University of Tasmania. And we're getting it for uh, works with publication year 20 or after 2022. Um, and another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the per page limit or what the number of, of items it sends per page. Uh, you can't increase this too much and you'll get errors if you try to go too high, um, but 100 will, will get us some more data for each call, which, uh, which is a little bit better. Uh, for uh, for what we're doing, um, I'm also gonna since you might have known it noticed that the 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 works that are returned um, have a lot of data in them, and you can you can limit that and have it send less data to you uh, by using the select parameter. So I'm gonna ask it just to return ID, DOI, publication year, title primary location, because we want to know something about the journals that, that these papers are in. Uh, we can also do authorships just in case, and we'll do topics. Um, but besides that, I think it should all be good. And, oh, no, it's not good, um, because we do need to do cursor paging, as I said. Uh, this is the, the Open Alex documentation page um, about, about paging. Um, there's also a link up here to a, a, another Jupyter notebook that that goes through it. Um, but basically, the way it works is you make a request, uh, you specify that you want um, want to do cursor paging, paging by adding this parameter, cursor equals star, and then the response has this meta field with a next cursor value. You you put that in to your next request. Um, so you just keep making requests, updating the next cursor value until the next cursor value comes back blank. And that means that there's no more data to be had. Um, this is the, the general way that, that cursor paging works. Like I said, there's like you can look in the documentation for exactly how that goes, but um, I'm just gonna implement it really quickly right now. Uh, so we're gonna initialize the cursor first. Like I said, cursor equals star and that's going to go into our parameters in, in just a little bit. Uh, we're going to in initialize an empty list to store our data. And just because we can, we'll, we'll also count the number of API queries that we make. Uh, and now we'll start our, our loop of API requests. So this means keep looping until cursor comes back empty. Uh, the first thing that we do in the loop is we update our cursor parameter. Next, we actually make the request. So just like before, response equals request.get URL params equals params. We can make sure that, that we got a good response um, just by checking. And so if that fails, we'll get th this error message and uh, this break will will br will break it and we can try to figure out what went wrong and, and start again. 
But if it succeeds, we'll go ahead and, and continue. So the results from, from this page in the loop can be uh, accessed this way. We take the response object, we call the JSON method on it, and we get the results from it. And now for each result we got, we can store it in that list that we initialized above. And like I said before, we can keep track of the number of APA queries just, uh, just for our information. The way you do that in Python is you increment it by one by, by going like that. Um, and then the last thing we need to do is update the cursor again. And so our new cursor is in that meta field. So again, we access the data we got back and we look in the meta next cursor field. We store that in the cursor and then the next time through the loop, this cursor variable will be updated with the, with the new cursor. And again, and again, and again, until the cursor comes back empty and it doesn't loop anymore. So once that happens and, and we're out of the loop, we're all done. I'm going to go ahead and run this. It might take a second because it has to page through and get all the works. Um, and we are waiting. We are waiting. It's 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 not printing out any error message. So hopefully everything's going well. Uh, but we have to wait for it to finish. I don't think it'll take too long. Um, but we're waiting and waiting. And it's done. Uh, so it ended up taking 44 queries to get 4,259 works. And these are the works from the University of Tasmania, of course, limited by publication year, but again, just, just because uh, this is a demo. Um, now, now that we've done this, uh, let's get all of the references from all those papers. Uh, and we're going to need to make even more API queries. Um, and so what I'm going to do first is define a function to do all of this. So we can do it over, over and over and over again for all of the references for all of the works that we collected. So oh, in Python, you define a new function by saying def. You name the function, API query page results is what I'll name it. You give any parameters that you need for, for the function to operate. So uh, these are what will specify to the function to, to actually make it run. Um, then basically, it's, it's a matter of copying and pasting what we did up here. So anytime we call this function, it's going gonna, it's gonna to loop through and get all the results we want. When we need to, since it's a function, we need to return the result of it at the end. Oh, actually, I, I am going to need uh, need all of this too. Yeah. And we want to, Python is very particular about indentation, so we want to make sure everything's in, indented right. Um, we don't need to print this anymore, but instead we need to return what we got and make sure you're indented outside of the for loop you want it to return after after all the loop is done um, but we're going to return all results um, i'm also going to change this to um, actually raise an error which you can do like this 
um, but hopefully we won't hit this code at all. So it's it's not going to to give us an error. Um, is there anything else I wanted to change in this? No, I think this is good. And so if we run the code in this cell, um, nothing will happen because all it did was was register this as a function that we can make use of uh, later, which is what we're going to do now. So we're, we want, uh, we're going to collect all of the references from the papers we collected before um, as a dictionary. So the dictionary will be uh, the cited, cited paper ID to a list of works from a from open Alex that are referenced by those papers by that paper so we'll start off by initializing that empty dictionary we're going to again limit limit the results we don't want to be waiting here forever so we're going to limit it to um Let's do the first 75 results. And we can also, um, I'm going to keep track of the number of works that we retrieved. So now we're going to loop up all the works we collected before in all results up here. We're going to start looping through those. They're actually they're they're up here now. Um, uh, so URL equals again API dot dot org slash works. Because we're trying to get works. Um, params equals our filter this time is cited by, and then the work ID that 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 we're working with here. So that's that's what this variable is right here. So the ID from this work. And then we'll also do, again, per page, get 100 works at a time. And we'll do select, we'll do the same thing as before. And now, after after each of those, oh well, oh uh, yeah, and so for 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 this work in this loop, and for every work as we go through the loop, we'll call the function that we defined above. Now that, that we called that API query page results, and we'll specify that we want the URL and the parameters that we just that we just defined. Now we'll go ahead and put this put the data we got into our dictionary that we defined above. So the key of the dictionary will be the referencing work, the the citing work, and the results that we want to store there will be the refer uh, references that we just got back from our function. We'll also, again, keep track of the count. This time, it's um, the length of the this variable that we got back. OK, and so when when all of this is done, now remember, it's, it's calling this function uh, 
over and over again. And this function is looping through a bunch of API calls. So this is probably going to be several thousand API calls. Um, and we might have to wait. It depends on uh, on if the API has cached things in the background. But let's go ahead and start it. Let's see, I got an error message. Oh no, something went wrong during the live demo. Uh, oh, I forgot. I only put one slash. There we go. Okay, so now it's running. Um, and I will just stall a little bit. Uh, if you want to know more about the, oh, it's already done. Um, I was going to say, if you want to know more about these fields that you can get back, um, you can certainly go to uh, docs.openalex.org. It's a great place. You can look at the work object, and it can tell you all about the, uh, the metadata fields that you can get. Um, but, you know, uh, we got 6,900 6, works. Um, and as a last step, I am definitely running out of time, but I'm gonna go ahead and write a CSV file that um, that uh, uh, is a two column CSV file. It's the edge list from citing paper to cited paper. Uh, so the way I'll do that, I'll just specify output file name, And just like before, we're going to open the file to write with this thing that, what was that? We'll initialize our writer. We'll write the header column. Uh, and then we'll look through the papers that we got. In our all references variable, and the way to look through dictionary items like that is is uh, you call that items on it. And then we have this list of cited works. Now we can write a row. Citing ID and the cited work ID. It should be good. Now we have a new CSV file with the edge list of citing work ID to cited work ID. Um, wonder if I, I did want to uh, include, I, I don't, I don't think I have time to, um, to do the last step I was going to do, uh, but I can show you in um, the, no, the notebook that I uh, will be making available. The last step I, I had is to write a metadata uh, CSV with more information about the uh, papers that we actually collected. And in this um, CSV file, we, we would have uh, information about the reference papers that we collected. We could also get it for, uh, get the, the journal um, ISSN and, and display name. Uh, we could get a uh, topic ID, but these are all examples. And in this code, it would go through and write 
um, a CSV file with all that information. You could open that up in Excel and do additional analysis. You could do pivot tables to learn about which journals are, are getting cited by your universities or by this university's uh, papers the most to learn more about topics. You could also just keep working on, on it in Python, um, which is uh, uh, yeah, another alternative. Um, but at the end of all this, you'll have these these two CSV files, one with the the two column edge list of the citing work uh, to the cited work and a metadata uh, CSV file with de a deduplicated list of those papers with um, with uh, whatever metadata you want about it uh, in the CSV. Um, I think that's it for the coding demo. Uh, we're running up against time, so uh, I'm going to throw it back to to Kyle to uh, for the offer input, um, and we're going to be stopping the recording for for a brief Q and A. Yeah, I'll just quickly say thanks again, Jason. This was fantastic. And I'm glad you, even though it went a little bit longer, we now have this as a recorded video. I'll stop the recording and we do have a couple of questions we can get through. Thanks okay. again for everyone who joined.